Here we are then, the first public beta of Android 15, and to celebrate, because I'm a good guy like that, you can have a free light mode wallpaper on us, and if this video happens to get 2,500 likes, then I'll give you that dark mode version down in the description too. What's new in beta 1 though, you're asking? Well, stick around and you'll find out. Quickly though, while you're watching this, if you haven't subscribed for more Android 15 content like this, and I think you probably should, and we like to make the best deep dives possible into our favorite mobile OS. We have more planned over the year and for each beta that is released, plus the full release of Android 15 when it does arrive. So join our squad today, hit subscribe, like the video, and stick around for more. So first up with beta one, Google is adding the ability to set a default wallet application on your phone. And this functionality, which is live by default in Android 15 beta one, allows you to set that default app within the wallet application. This essentially will handle the NFC payments on your phone. That's what I'm trying to say. On Pixel, this is ordinarily set to the Google wallet application by default, even if you don't have it installed and any other application on your phone will not be able to do so unless you open it. In our brief testing, this only seemed to work with a couple of applications. So far, we've only found Amex, that's in North America, but it doesn't really seem to do anything, at least at this point in time. For those of you in other regions where similar services to Google wallet exist for wireless payments, this might be godsend as you can use various payment methods or services. It might also come in handy for lots of upcoming third-party ROMs, which often do fail safety net checks when trying to use wireless payments with Google Wallet. That said, you can actually just disable the functionality entirely from this menu if you prefer. The immensely popular Google Weather Widgets, they're exclusively available on Pixel phones and now we're getting a new home as they're moving within that default widgets section. They now live under a new Pixel Weather option that will be home to those various Material U inspired designs. There's no new changes, but the, it is a new and easier to find place within that section. It's not under the weather section anymore. It's a little bit slightly further up within this menu. That's not the only change to this area though, as on some devices, or at least more of our devices, we're seeing widgets at the top of that preview pane sit more side by side, or at least more often when previews are showcased for you to put them on your home screen. On previous builds, up to two widgets are more frequently displayed vertically. In Android 15 Beta 1, we're actually seeing smaller options side by side, at least more regularly, even on smaller screens like the Pixel 8 and in that default or set at those default display settings. Google has also made some changes to improve your privacy on Wi-Fi networks with an improved privacy page that includes radio buttons rather than the small pop-up, which is used in the previous builds and is found on stable versions of Android 14. There is also a new toggle within this menu to stop your phone from sending or sharing the device name with that wider network you're connected to. This will no doubt help when using public Wi-Fi networks, although we also recommend using a VPN when using public Wi-Fi, but it is a nice touch and one that we are happy to see Google adding here in Android 15 Beta 1. Another privacy focus option when on cellular mobile networks is a new cellular network security menu that allows you to set up notifications if a mobile network is deemed insecure or lacks encryption. It will also notify you if said network attempts to record your IMI or IMSI. And this is a great addition to Android 15 Beta 1 as it can prevent the usage of Stingray devices which are designed to mimic cell towers to trick phones into connecting to them and therefore tracking your location. You might not necessarily be James Bond but it's still a good privacy control to have in Android 15 Beta 1. A big tentpole of Android 15 Beta 1 is the ability for developers to profile information within applications. For those of us that aren't devs, this manifests itself as the ability to check memory usage within developer options. If you do have developer options enabled, you can see just what apps are chewing away at your device RAM. Here in beta one though, we can actually disable or enable this tracking function. It is disabled by default and does require a restart if you wanna see how much memory is being used on your phone at any given time though, but it is nice to have the option to enable or disable this as you see fit. So that's the main bulk of the changes out of the way. I know that's a little bit disappointing, but there are lots of super small UI changes and tweaks here in beta one as well. One that I'm not even sure is new, I wanna ask you actually, our loyal viewers, is if the pop-up app quick menus have marginally thinner text compared to the latest stable Android 14 build. It's worth noting that both of these devices are running at the default display settings, but at least in my opinion, the text is ever so slightly less bold here in Android 15 beta one. Maybe that is something that will change as the beta progresses and Google finds out or decides what they're gonna do with this. Let me know though if you see what I'm seeing in the comment sections below. I feel like I'm going crazy over this one little inconsequential detail, but it is something I 
thought I would know anyway. And while it's likely an indication of some other changes, you may also see double headers or section titles within some settings menus. When in light mode, this has a pretty dodgy looking 3D effect, but when in dark mode, it looks like the text more often seen within the at a glance widget. I'm hoping that this change reverts or gets another lick of paint or some more time in the oven as it looks like a little bit like a bug from where I'm stood here right now. Another change that is going to improve the visuals is that apps targeting Android 15 will now actually display edge to edge by default from beta one onwards. This should look a lot better on larger screens like the Pixel Fold and the Pixel Tablet. That said, we haven't seen any applications, at least at this stage, which will support it. And we do expect to see more as time progresses. Android 15 beta one also makes one minor change to the predictive back gesture, something that isn't that widely available in lots of applications. Most of the time you'll see this within the actual settings section when sliding in between these. The new option looks more like a playing card, floating almost rather than sliding into view like it does in the previous builds. But I think this is a really nice touch that I'm really pleased Google is paying attention to. But for most of you out there, you will need to go into develop options and enable this to see it correctly anyway. Sadly though, that is all Google has for us thus far with Android 15 Beta 1. I have to say from a user interface perspective, it's another pretty paltry list of changes to go with what we saw in Developer Preview 1 and Developer Preview 2. I guess that you could argue that Android is so mature as a platform that major changes just aren't quite as necessary or as expected. I was actually hoping though to see some more AI powered functions baked into Android 15. However, Google I.O. is not too far away and that could really be the catalyst for some larger changes and tweaks. So let's hope and pray for something more substantial from mid-May onwards. And we will be on the ground to give you all of the info. As you can see from the timeline as well on screen, we're actually likely looking at four total beta updates. A couple of these are likely to be release candidates once platform stability is reached as well later in the beta phase. Android 15 is also expected to receive a final release sometime around August or September based upon previous timelines. So we have a little while to go. Maybe Google will have a little bit more up their sleeve in the coming months. And I will also add to this that this is the first Android 15 build that we actually recommend here that you go and try on your phone. That said, as always, there are risks to any public preview. So maybe don't install this on your only device. Leave that to us. In summary though, I've got to say I'm really underwhelmed so far with Android 15 from the get-go this year. I'm definitely huffing a little bit of copium in the hope that we'll get more substantial changes in the coming months, as I just mentioned. Let me know though how you feel down in the comment sections below. I know a lot of you are a little bit down on Android at the moment in terms of the actual UI changes and what Google's doing to the platform. As always though, thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.